Over the past 100 years, McMurray has been a transformative institution of higher education, both here in Abilene and across the wider big country. What began as a small, single-building Methodist college years ago has grown into a powerful symbol of faith, learning, and resilience all these years later. McMurray College was founded by Dr. J.W. Hunt in 1923 and named after Bishop William Fletcher McMurray. Dr. Hunt was the last president of Stanford College, which tragically lost a third of its buildings to fire in 1918. He was appointed by Bishop McMurray as commissioner of the new Methodist College in 1921, which would eventually take shape over the following years. The long road to the establishment of a big country Methodist college was fraught with many logistical and financial hurdles before any construction began to take shape. Henry James, then president of Farmers and Merchants National Bank, led the campaign to fund McMurray's founding and ensure the doors opened in September 1923. Mr. James served for many years on McMurray's Board of Trustees and was a longtime member of St. Paul United Methodist Church. Farmers and Merchants National Bank was eventually renamed to First Financial Bank, and they have maintained their strong relationship with McMurray ever since. McMurray's transformation over the past 10 decades is perhaps most noticeable in the expansion of its facilities. The three-story administration building, today commonly known as Old Main, was the first building erected on campus, and it housed administration offices, the original library, and the science labs and fine arts departments. Following that came President's Hall, the Iris Graham Dining Hall, and by the late 1950s, Radford Auditorium. These buildings still exist today, nestled at the corner of Sales and South 14th. Radford's powerful facade reminds each of us what it means to weather the storms of life and come out the other end with a renewed sense of purpose. Over time, McMurray's leadership has undergone incredible changes in both size and purpose. Dr. Hunt led our opening convocation as president, September 20th, 1923. He was the first of a long line of Methodist ministers to helm the college's administration, but that line ended with the appointment of Dr. Gordon Bennett in 1958. Our current president, Dr. Sandra Harper, is the 10th president and notably first woman to lead McMurray. A former faculty member, Dr. Harper has overseen a period of explosive growth for the university since her appointment in 2013. Our long and storied history doesn't just fall narrowly within the confines of our academic programs either. From the very beginning, almost 100 years ago, McMurray's emphasis on athletics has been a central focus in attracting talented students, coaches, and other mentors to our campus. Names like Raymond T. Prof Bynum, the father of the modern football halftime show, or Kenneth Deckard, McMurray's first black player, signifying a new progressive mindset in football integration. Or what about Grant Taff, a college football coaching luminary in his own right? Each of these incredible leaders once called McMurray their home, either as students, coaches, professors, or in some cases, all three. Their names and achievements are emblazoned in the history books and revered on our campus. That's really what it comes down to. The people. McMurray has graduated countless brilliant individuals across many different fields of industry, and many of them came back to us as leaders. They took a look at the world, they rolled up their sleeves, and they said, watch this. McMurray's legacy is nothing if not defined by the measure of their impact. For the 100 years that have come to pass, and more importantly, to the next 100 years, we stand proud in declaring our time-honored commitment to service and greatness. Alakumba. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm George Levac, the executive director of the Paramount Theater and McMurray University alumni. Proud. Uh, McMurray uh, wanted a historic venue for this significant announcement, and I am honored that they chose the Paramount Theater for the announcement of McMurray's 100 and all centennial teams. Of course, McMurray had been established many years before this 92-year-old building was even built. The legacy of McMurray and the Paramount will always be connected to the theater's founder, H.O. Wooten, 
who also supported McMurray during its early years. Wooten believed in the vision of Dr. Hunt. He was one of the university's very first Board of Trustees members. You might have seen his name on the screen. And when you leave the theater and you're in the lobby, take a look up. There's a beautiful photograph that still hangs of H.O. Wooten on the second floor mezzanine. What a historic day it is for McMurray and my alma mater as they continue to celebrate its centennial. I would like to turn the program over to McMurray's Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Mr. Mike Hutchinson, class of 1987. There's nothing better than following a former anchor man. So uh, it's always an honor to have um, an alumnus as a part of our program. And George is just one of the many examples of the great stakeholders and influencers uh, that we have here in Abilene. And George, we are so lucky that you're a part of the family. George has been an active supporter of McMurray Centennial, as you can tell from the video, helping to tell the university's story from the early days in McMurray moment segments. And I hope that you've had a chance to see them. And now, as a part of the opening video today, and again, George, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Our centennial would not have happened had it not been um, for a great community partner that we have, and actually a partner that has been with us the entire um, 100 years almost that McMurray has been in existence. So I want to take a moment to recognize Marilyn uh, Shedd, who is here with us today. Marilyn, would you stand up? And Marshall, you're here with us today. Would you please stand up? And let's thank them. <laughs> Marilyn is president of First Financial Bank in the Abilene region, and the First Financial Bank for their support as McMurray Centennial um, partner has been uh, unmatched. As you learned from the opening video today, the connection between McMurray and First Financial Bank dates back even before the opening of McMurray in 1923. There aren't a lot of institutions that can make that claim, but we proudly make that claim during our centennial year. Additionally, there are many alums of McMurray who work for First Financial today, continuing to strengthen that relationship, and, and we are honored again uh, to be a partner with First Financial Bank during this year and the last almost 100 years. When we kicked off the centennial year back in September, a research team was diligently compiling a list of individuals and organizations who have moved McMurray forward during the past 99 years. The first convocation was on September 20th, 1923, which you saw in the video, and then on September 21st, 2023 of this year, President Sandra Harper will oversee the 100th convocation. Our centennial year celebration will conclude in October of this year during our homecoming weekend from October 26th to the 28th, um, culminating with a gala on Saturday night. So we hope that we will, you will put those dates on your calendar. That again is October 26th through the 28th of 2023. In addition to this celebration, growth has been a theme for this centennial year. And in the fall, the reimagined Garrison Student Center is scheduled to open. What a year for McMurray, and we are looking forward now to the future. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce McMurray's 10th president, Dr. Sandra Harper, to the stage to talk about the McMurray 100 and what these individuals have contributed to the history of McMurray. Please welcome her. Thank you, Mike. And thank all of you for joining with McMurray today as we announce the McMurray 100. Because of the significance of each of the honorees' contributions, we chose a live public announcement to introduce the award and share the honorees' information. As you entered the theater today, you should have received a program with the complete list and short bios of the honorees. I'm sure you'll be as impressed as I am with the accomplishments of each of them. Take a moment after this program to review the entire list and learn more about the civic leaders, the alums, athletes, faculty, staff, administrators who shaped today's McMurray. The university views the naming of the McMurray 100 as an integral piece of our centennial celebration. 
These individuals have contributed to the institution's growth and success over the 100-year history. When we developed the idea of identifying 100 people who illustrated vision, tenacity, commitment, and longevity to help shape today's McMurray, we were eager to have the opportunity to learn more about the individuals who created and developed McMurray throughout our history. The McMurray 100 includes trustees, friends of the university, alumni, faculty, staff, and administrators. Each of the 10 decades of McMurray's existence are represented in the McMurray 100. It has taken all of these individuals and the groups that they represent throughout the 10 decades to achieve the enduring purpose of McMurray University. The research subcommittee compri comprised of alumni, former faculty and staff, and current faculty and staff with years of institutional knowledge and historical perspective reviewed the over 200 nominations that we received. After multiple rounds of review by the research subcommittee, the university leadership, centennial steering committee, the trusteeship, and the executive committee of the trustees, the McMurray University Board of Trustees approved the final listing of the McMurray 100 at its December 2022 board meeting. The McMurray 100 not, uh, honorees demonstrate the core values of the university, Christian faith, personal relationships, learning, excellence, and service as the foundations, catalyst, goal, and measure of life. McMurray began with the dream of Dr. J.W. Hunt, who inspired others in Abilene to believe and dream with him. Dr. Hunt was the pastor at St. Paul's Methodist Church, where he met and inspired Henry James, and together they worked to raise funds, <laughs> secure land, and gain support for a Methodist college. Civic leaders J.M. Cunningham, Ed Hughes, K.K. Leggett, and Henry Sales, Jr. joined Hunt and James to donate and secure the 42 acres of land for McMurray's campus, which people tell me was on the outskirts of Abilene at that time. H.O. Wooten stepped up to be the first board chair of the new Methodist College. The core values of McMurray today are present in these McMurray 100 honorees. Christian faith and personal relationships as foundational pillars illustrated in the relationships of all of these civic leaders who came together with others to create McMurray. The values of learning, excellence, and service are illustrated in the, in the commitment of six faculty women, today known as the founding faculty women. Julia Luker, Elizabeth Myatt, Gypsy Ted Sullivan Wiley, Jenny Tate, Bernie Newman, and Willie Mae Christopher joined the McMurray faculty in its beginning years and stood by through hardship enduring the Great Depression and World War II. When times were desperate, these women took significantly reduced salaries to ensure that McMurray endured. Together, they served McMurray for 218 years. Personal relationships continue to be showcased in the inspirational passing of the love of irises from Dr. Joe Humphrey to his student and future faculty member, Dr. Pug Paris. The influence of physics professor, Dr. J Virgil Bottom, on then student Roger Ward created a successful graduate and pioneer business leader who now generously supports the science programs at McMurray today. Athletic legends, Herschel Kimbrell, Barbara Krausen, and Grant Taft grace the McMurray 100, as well as exemplifying the importance of athletics in McMurray's history and the generational support of the Student Center by the Garrison family, including Shirley and Mil Mildred and their children, showcase the commitment of personal relationships, service, and excellence. The family established business programs and an entrepreneurial lectureship. The children of the Garrisons, including son Harvey Garrison and their daughters, Sharon Garrison Walker and husband Bruce, Pam Garrison Carruthers and husband Bill, are lead donors to the new Student Center campaign. Sarah Hernandez Hudman Graham, Barbara Seidel Swaggerty, and Mary Esther Bynum all graduated from McMurray and continue to generously support their alma mater. 
you can see their impact across campus on athletic courts and buildings. Current Abilene civic leaders, including Tucker Bridwell and Diane Graves Owen Stye, follow in the university found founders' footsteps, leading their leadership skills and generosity in support of McMurray. Both have served on our board and supported the advancement of learning at McMurray through support of the Johnson School of Business and other important McMurray initiatives. McMurray has embraced diversity and inclusion from its origin. Alumnus Dan Dobson was instrumental in the integration of Major League Baseball in 1947. Kenneth Decker, an alum and member of the 1960s football team, is recognized for his role in the integration of Texas college football, as authored by Robert Jacobus in Black Man in the Huddle. Dr. Esperanza Hope Harmon became an advisor to the President of the United States on Hispanic issues and continues to support McMurray, which is recognized today as a Hispanic serving institution. The value of service is carried forward today and illustrated by alum Anthony Williams, a respected civic leader and Abilene's first African-American mayor and first McMurray alumnus to be elected to lead the city. If you are a member of the McMurray 100 or a member of the family of a McMurray 100 honoree, please stand. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Inside your programs, we have shared brief summaries of the McMurray 100's commitment and impact on the university's first 100 years. Their service, vision, and support have ensured the legacy and advancement of the educational mission of McMurray. The formal presentation of the award to the honorees and their family members will be on October 28, 2023, as Mike has said, that's homecoming weekend. Now I would like to invite to the stage Dr. Sam Ferguson, our Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, who will share background on the all-century team. Sam? Thank you, Dr. Harper, and uh, thank you all for being here tonight. What an honor it is to um, be here this afternoon to introduce our all-century teams. Um, Universities around the country benefit from their athletics programs, and McMurray is no different. Since the doors opened in 1923, McMurray has offered athletics to our students, beginning with the football program in the inaugural year of our institution. Additional sports were added, later women's sports, and our most recent additions include softball in 2018 and esports in 2019. Today we have 20 NCAA Division III men's and women's athletics programs, and more than 500 students at McMurray compete in one or more sports. During the university's centennial celebration, we are honoring McMurray's athletics heritage by paying tribute to the scholar-athletes and coaches who have competed over the past 100 years. Inside your program are our all-century team honorees, including everything from winning as coaches to leading scores, All-Americans, conference and national champions, nearly 350 athletes and coaches make up the teams. These scholar athletes and coaches have upheld a philosophy of achieving excellence that is shared by McMurray and the NCAA, as we believe athletics competition is an integral part of the educational experience. At McMurray, we strive to promote an environment that values cultural diver diversity and gender equity among our scholar athletes and our athletic staff. So the selection process for the all century teams included a research committee comprised of alumni, staff members with years of institutional knowledge and historical perspective. It has been an arduous and difficult task to narrow down this tremendous list to uh, just a few honorees, and the work began over a year ago. We looked at thousands of records, considered thousands of names uh, to come up with, with this year's um, all-century team. One key qualification was that these athletes must have graduated from McMurray. After multiple reviews from the committee and uh, checks from the registrar's office, the all-century teams were selected. 
In your program, you'll see the full list of names by sport, but I want to take a moment to highlight just a few today. Uh, when you think of McMurray football, you think of Wilford Moore. Not only did he have a Hall of Fame coaching career, but he is the namesake of our stadium. Uh, you also think of Spud Aldridge, who was the NAIA and TIAA Coach of the Year in 1980. Baseball coach Lee Driggers, he coached for 13 seasons at McMurray and won four conference championships during his tenure. McMurray has been a pioneer for women in the coaching industry with, with legendary coaches including Bev Ball, who coached swimming in Texas for more than 60 years. She served 48 successful years as a high school swim coach at Abilene High and Cooper before joining McMurray in 1999 to start our swim program. She has won three conference championships and produced numerous individual champions during her tenure. And Bev, we love you the best. The McMurray 100 list includes the legendary men's and women's track and field coach, Barbara Krausen. Coach Krausen was the first woman ever at any level at the NCAA and for any sport to win a national championship coaching men, and she did that twice. Rexy Parcells is now following in Coach Krausen's footsteps as a championship cross-country coach. In Rexy's five years at McMurray, she has led the men's and women's cross-country teams to three championships. She is the first coach at McMurray to lead both the men's and the women's cross-country teams to conference championships in the same year. So you think about that, I think McMurray's unique in this. We've got three women in our history who have coached men's teams to championships. That's impressive. Our volleyball coach, Cami Petrie, she also possesses that winning gene. Uh, she became the winningest coach in McMurray history in any sport in 2021. There are a few athletes that I wanna highlight to, uh, today, including football players Elroy Payne and uh, Brad Rowland. Payne scored a program record of 27 points in one game versus Austin College in 1953. So not only did he score four touchdowns, but he also kicked a, uh, an extra point and a field goal, and I think he sold some popcorn at halftime. <laughs> uh, Rowland, he amassed 4,347 rushing yards in a career that spanned from 1947 to 1950. Dale Doby, who lives here in Abilene now, uh, he was the Region 8 Defensive Back of the Year in 1978 under Coach Aldridge, and, and uh, he had 24 tackles. That's a picture right there of him playing against Sol Ross. He had 24 tackles and three interceptions in that game. Brittany Carey Harrison was a women's golf national champion. Tara Richardson won the Jostens Trophy. That's one of the most prestigious awards in Division III women's basketball. And uh, in addition to that, she is currently the American Southwest Conference's all-time leading scorer. She scored 2,164 career points. And Han Allison's remarkable career elevated McMurray's track and field program to national success. He became a 17-time All-American. There are so many others who have performed at a high level in competition and in the classroom. Uh, we don't have the time to tell all their stories today, but we will in the future. At McMurray, our goal has been to develop champions for life through intercollegiate athletics. Our all-century team epitomizes what it means to be a champion for life. And I'd like to, again, congratulate all of our honorees. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, we will have an event in the fall where we will honor our all century teams and uh, we'll announce that date in the very near future. So this time, again, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Uh, Dr. Harper, bring you back to the podium. Thank you, Sam. Well, thank you to the McMurray 100 who without your vision and generosity to McMurray, we would not be celebrating our centennial. Your legacy lives on each day in the thousands of alumni and the current members of the McMurray academic community. And to our all-century teams and coaches, and, and let's have, if you're a member of an all-century team or uh, all-century coach, please stand. 
Please stand. I know we got some here. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for your commitment to sportsmanship and academic excellence. Championships have been won on the field and in life because of your training and dedication to the legacy of McMurray. We look forward to new records and new championships in the future. To alumni, faculty, and staff, thank you for carrying the legacy of McMurray forward. And thanks to those of you who helped with all the preparations for our centennial celebration and the uh, selection process that we've described. Thank you to First Financial Bank for your enduring support and for helping to make McMurray's centennial year special. Thank you, George Levesque, for allowing McMurray to make this meaningful announcement in this historic theater. Now I would like to invite you to join me today in the reception in the lobby, and this concludes our formal program.